Hey guys, welcome back to another episode here on Orms TV and today we are checking out the brand new Fuji XE4. Yeah, and we actually took a little road trip around the Cape Peninsula here because we were actually shooting a review on the all new GFX 100S at the exact same time. So we used the XE4 to do a little bit of candid shots, behind the scenes, that kind of thing. Really the type of thing that you would want to use this camera for. So we're going to give you guys a quick rundown on the specs of this unit and how we found shooting with it. So let's get right into that. So we're not going to go in-depth specs with this one and I think the main reason for that is because it is quite similar to Fuji's other lineup like the X-T30, X-S10 and X-T4. But headline specs, you've got 26 megapixels, 425 autofocus points and 4K30 but no IBIS in this unit. Yeah, and I mean, the fact that the specs are so similar to those other cameras is not really a bad thing. I mean, Fuji's been making this camera in this type of configuration for like the last two years since the X-T4 came out. And nothing wrong with that. I mean, it is a tasty sensor, a really good processor, and I personally see no problem with it. Yeah, I think when we were shooting with it today, we both really enjoyed it. And I think we're gonna focus on a lot of the things that we like and maybe one or two things we don't like. Okay, so the first thing I wanna mention is that it is really nice when camera brands listen to their clients' feedback. And if you own a Fuji, you probably would have seen one of these thumb grips on many of their cameras. It's always been a third party or generic accessory, but for the first time, Fuji is bundling this with the X-T4. And on top of that, you get the great extended hand grip, which makes handling this camera a dream. And without it, it feels strange. I would really recommend getting it with the camera. Yeah, I wanna to touch on the fact of how it feels without this. So if the little thumb grip comes off and you don't have the hand grip, and please note, this is an optional bundle. It doesn't come with that as standard. You have to buy a separate bundle for it. Without that, it is the smoothest body that I have felt in a very, very long time. And it's not something that I generally complain a lot about, but there's no thumb divot at the back at all. And there's no hump here whatsoever for any type of grip. And it makes the camera very, very uncomfortable to use. And the moment that you, even if you just get the thumb grip on there, it's already significantly better. Yes. Yeah, so I would really, really recommend that if you are considering an XE4, that you strongly look at that little bundle with these two optional accessories, 100% worth it. Because this, I mean, I'm holding it for like a couple of seconds and it's uncomfortable because yeah. I'm immediately relying on my pinky trying to hold the camera up and it just doesn't really work. Now, something that I actually do enjoy is the fact that Fuji still very much maintains their tactile and physical dials on yeah. these cameras. And you see that all over the place and you see it throughout their entire range. Everything feels very solid, very well put together. The body materials feel good. You know, even if it doesn't necessarily look like metal, it feels solid, it feels good in the hands when you're actually holding it. And as we've come to expect from Fuji, pretty much every single button that you see on here is customizable. You can set it to be whatever you want it to be. And I mean, me and Andre both use these cameras very differently. And it's literally, we pick it up after the other person's used it. The first thing you do is you dive into the menu and you quickly change the shortcuts to how you like it and you carry on and you shoot an absolute happiness. So next up, we're gonna talk about some of these buttons on this XE4 mm. and it is kind of a first for Fuji and their cameras. And it's these two new pressure sensitive buttons here at the back. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a huge fan of it. Yeah. It doesn't always feel like you're touching a button. I would really like it if they could maybe raise it up or it feels like you're pressing or pushing a button more. Yeah, absolutely. And it's kind of the same for these two at the top. Like, yeah, I mean, definitely a little bit tricky to press, press them sometimes. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, I found if I'm shooting through the viewfinder and I don't have the sort of like the display information switched on, it's not always clear to know when you've pressed one of those buttons. And I found it weird because at the back here, there's three actual hard press buttons. Yeah. That's very tactile, very easy to know when you've pressed it. So, you know, just make all my buttons real buttons. Man. <laughs> then other thing, it's got the YouTube crowd happy. It's got the vlogging screen. So if you're filming yourself or doing some selfies, you can definitely achieve that. Yeah. Um, as per standard with cameras in this day and age, it's got USB-C socket. So you can actually also with an adapter, put some headphones in there. Mm. It does also have the microphone input. So again, you can improve your audio there. 
And then lastly, it's got the traditional 126 battery from Fuji. Mm. And yeah, the normal SD card slot. Now you've mentioned the vlogging potential because of the flip out screen. And I actually want to touch on something related to that. And that is the autofocus in this camera, and specifically the eye and face detect autofocus. Now, Fuji's been working really, really hard on that mechanism. And even in some of their more powerful cameras like the X-T4, I always felt like it was a little bit lacking. And even the last Fuji that I reviewed, which was the XS10, it was there, but it still wasn't perfect. This is a big improvement, and I know it's just software because it's the same autofocus system as what's in all of those cameras, but if it's just software, then well done, because it actually works really, really well. Every time that I found myself shooting you guys, doing something in a group setting, busy, anything like that, it picks out a face, it locks onto an eye, it's quick, it's effortless, and it just works. And even when you're filming, it locks on, it tracks really well, and that's a big step up for Fuji because it has been something that they've struggled with, and I actually really enjoyed it. I didn't immediately switch it off like I always do when I pick up an X-T4 or an X-S10. Well done. Yeah, I think that's a good point. With mirrorless cameras, there's a huge advantage of things being improved and updated via firmware. One thing I really love about this camera, and especially me being a Fuji shooter myself, I really love how they took some of the professional specs that you see in their top line bodies and put it into something that's more approachable for someone maybe starting out or buying their first camera. It's a really great camera to pick up, learn photography from, but still give you that sort of professional feel to your images. Yeah, and the other thing that kind of stood out for me that very much ties in with that, and I'm kind of taking this away from the XS10, because Fuji's whole idea when they brought out the XS10 was to make this very like unintimidating camera, this kind of like, if you're coming from a DSLR environment and that's the type of camera that you're used to, pick up an XS10, that was like their whole thing. But it didn't really have the Fuji aesthetic. And this really, really nails it. You get that sort of classic kind of vintage retro look that I think a lot of people really enjoy from Fuji. And it's almost like they kind of lost it a little bit and they swinging right back in, kind of giving you what you want. And like, this is a pretty little camera. Yeah. Like it's a really, really good looking little camera. Shooting today actually kind of put it into perspective for me. So we were running around with the GFX100S shooting and that's a very, very serious camera. I mean, that's not the type of camera that you're gonna take on holiday or the type of camera that you're just gonna be casually walking around with. This though is a daily carry. You know, this is the type of camera that's gonna be in your camera bag, living in the boot of your car, in the glove box, 24 seven, you're gonna have it with you literally all the time. And it really speaks to where I think this camera is aimed at. Very much the travel camera, you know, the general content creation, you know, um, bloggers, vloggers, that whole segment of the market. You know, even somebody who's just into being a little bit more creative with their photography, stepping up from a cell phone or something like that and wanting to get into something a little bit more serious. Really broadly aimed, but kind of really hitting its niche absolutely perfectly. You know, it really is a daily little camera. And you mentioned it earlier, actually, shooting side by side with the GFX100. I mean, I know I'm kind of pointing at it and unfortunately you guys can't see it, but it's sitting right over there and I keep looking over at it. It's close. It's, it is actually very close. Yes, obviously the image quality is far superior on the medium format, yeah. but this little machine, it's quite powerful for what it is. Absolutely, and once you're shooting in the film simulation modes, Ooh, there's very little between the two. If you're just looking at the picture quality on the surface, you know, when you pixel peep, it's a bit of a different story. But for what this little camera is, that's a little powerhouse. All right, guys, that is our review on the Fuji X-E4. And as we said, for all the travel guys out there or it's your first mirrorless camera, it's a really great option. Let us know in the comments what you think. Yeah, guys, and if you enjoy the content that we put out, please consider subscribing to our channel. It really helps us out a lot and enables us to keep making the type of content that you guys enjoy. Until next time, cheers. Cheers.